finally starting to click in that last game on Monday in Hawaii. Now they're back home on their home floor in Winston-Salem. Getting ready for this ACC Big East matchup. Should be a good one this afternoon. Glad to have you with us here on ACC Network. Wake Forest in white, Villanova in the dark blue. Just the second ever meeting between these two programs. And the first was way back in 1988 NCAA tournament, a two-point win for the Demon Deacons. So you see Nova already running this motion offense. Coach Dylan, emphasis, get the ball moving. They want to have a couple passes and find the best option in their shot selection. A big change in the starting lineup. Number 34, Maddie Weber getting the start as a regular starting point guard. Zanai Jones had an ankle injury in the last game against Holy Cross. For the Demon Deacons, their starting lineup. Kaya Harrison coming off maybe her best game in the last couple of years at the point guard position. Alyssa Andrews, Malaya Coles, Elise Williams trying to find her groove, and Alexandria Scruggs. Three goes up for Maddie Burke and in. That's a good start for Burke, the transfer from Penn State. And coaches challenge Burke to take more shots, be more confident. She is a steady player. She makes the right decisions. But Coach Dylan told us, Jenny, she, Jen, she said, we need you to step up and take better shots. Her second year, Burke with the Wildcats after transferring from Penn State. Different role. Both of these teams would like to say they have those positionless players, right? That every player can step out, play every position in this offense. Shot clock running down as Elise Williams drives for Wake Forest. Gets her own rebound. Keeps it alive for the Deeks. But then they lose it out of bounds. So here is that adjusted starting five for Villanova. This is the first time all season that they've had to change up that starting lineup with no Zanai Jones available for this one today. So Maddie Weber stepping in and the other one to really watch, Christina Dalsey in the middle, number 10, such a big presence, led the Big East in block shots last season. Inside it goes to Olsen and she has her first points. Great read, great read. Just a little dive and drop there for Olsen. Great opportunistic player. 5-0 start for the Wildcats. Demon Deacons trying to go inside to Scruggs, who is playing a bit out of position to start this season with Amira Hines still out with a lower body injury. They're hoping to get her back by conference play. You talk about the motion offense that both teams run. They're both different looks. You see with Wake Forest, they're a little more athletic, so you'll see a lot more dribble drive, a lot of focus in there on the paint, as you see here on the drive down. Yeah, Kaya Harrison again with the shot clock winding down, and Wake Forest with just eight-tenths of a second now to work with on the inbounds. No, it did get reset on the shot, so 20 seconds for the Deeks. Having some difficulty finding a good look against this Villanova defense so far. You can't sleep on that Wildcat defense. They play high IQ defense, they play the angle game, and they play very hard and with lots of length. Play Cole spinning. Nice move to a right hand. First points for the Deeks on the board. Great move by Cole there, and that's exactly what the Deeks need to do. Find that isolation in the post. They have strong, big bodies, and that's where they can make their money. Cole's coming off a 12-point performance on Monday in Hawaii. And good movement there with Olsen just finding her way to the basket, and she is fouled. Have a couple of free throws coming up. And this is Nova basketball. Spread the spread the defense out, get them spread out, make cuts and make the right reads. Read and react. And that's exactly what Olsen does so well. She knows the offense extremely well, whether she's running it or whether she's playing off the ball. And really a very good free throw shooter, typically. Over 70% on the season, misses the first. It's such a great duo with Maddie Seagrist. Of course, Seagrist top scorer in the country, went number three in the WNBA draft. Got a lot of the attention, but Lucy Olsen was waiting in the wings and has really stepped out and spread those wings so far this season. 24 and a half points per game, ranked sixth in the country in scoring. And 
for Wake Forest, Asia. It's really about replacing that production and that presence of Jewel Spear who transferred to Tennessee. Yeah, being drop, drop off at all. She's doing some things over at Tennessee, leading the team right now, especially without Rakia Jackson playing. But yeah, lots of loss in the production end. She's a terrific three-point shooter. She does a little bit of everything, defense, makes plays. So it is a bit of a loss for Wake Forest, but like you said before, what are players going to do now to step up? I look inside again, and it is Coles who comes through. And this is exactly what Coach Jevia wants from Wake Forest. Make reads, slow it down. Give you all your options. Don't just be stagnant and stand around and force jump shots. So after Villanova scored the first five points in the game, Wake Forest finding their way back in in this first quarter. Have to get a hand in the face of Lucy Olsen, though. Exactly, Lucy Olsen, her spots. The elbow, free throw line area, and right there at the top of the key. That's her money. Olsen, a 44% three-point shooter on the season thus far. Williams the dive and dish. But the Deeks lose it out of bounds. You have to know where your man is at all time when you talk about the Wildcats. Patience on the offense right there, running to the kick out. Great pass to Olsen and she finishes. Villanova three and one on the season and back-to-back -back wins in their last couple of games. Lucy Olsen in one of those games had 40 points against Temple, was four of six from three in that game and 12 of 13 from the free throw line. So now she's only one of four in that 40-point club for women's basketball at Nova. Big East Player of the Week for her efforts. Dishes it off this time, though. Good look on the interior to find Maddie Burke. The patience, the rhythm, the poise that Villanova plays with, that's why they execute so well in their motion offense. Read and react. They do it so well. And excuse me, that was Bryn McCurry, the 6'1 freshman who came in off the bench for the Wildcats. Has her first points in the game. Harrison, five on the shot clock. She'll try to drive. And they will not get the shot off in time. Just smothering defense by Villanova. Lucy Olsen here. Got to know where she is because she is shot ready and she will knock it down. Nova off to a good spur. And Denise Dillon is in her fourth season in charge. 2022 Big East Coach of the Year said everything for her always starts with this blue collar mentality for her age. That's what Villanova basketball starts and ends with. Exactly. That's what she instills in this team culture. Blue collar work ethic. And you see that it translates directly on the court. And that's why they were so successful in the last season. Obviously, they had Maddie Seagrass, but it was a team effort. Yeah, 30 wins, the most in program history. And getting all the way to the Sweet 16 for just the second time ever. And a completely dominant one in the tournament. Good start to this game on the road against Wake Forest. And that one will not fall for McCurry. Deeks have gone over two minutes without a basket. Drive by Williams, looking to dish off for Scruggs, and it's good. There we go, love that play. And it starts with Scruggs, that good ball screen she set at the top that Coach was telling us about. Williams is able to drive down low, and then a great dump off, great read there. Olsen, ball in her hands, passes it. Remember, she is a point guard by nature, but a scoring point guard all the way as she gets it to Bella Runyon, who is fouled. And there is the player who has shifted to that point guard role this season, Zanai Jones. They're sure hoping they get her back soon, but wanted to be very careful just bringing her back. Shifted her to the one, Asia, to try to get Lucy Olsen off the ball a little bit more and give her some more opportunities in a different way. 
Exactly, and that's why Olsen has been, you know, so proud in the scoring is because she's off the ball in more of that scoring position. And Jones has done a great job finding her teammates. And one benefit of her, you know, sitting out right now, she can learn a lot from sitting on the bench. Runyon at the free throw line had her first career double-double against Holy Cross in the last game. 13 points, career high 13 rebounds. Kate Diebel, number 12, the redshirt freshman of Brisbane, Australia, on the floor now for the Deeks. So this Andrews had to come off, picked up a couple of early fouls. Williams. I don't like that her shot. Groove. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't like that shot at all. I think, you know, with the Deeks, they want to come off of that ball screen and attack downhill. Don't settle for jump shots. Blocking foul against Wake Forest. Once again, put Villanova on the free throw line. This offense, you know, Denise Dillon telling us, look, there's been a lot more ugly than the good so far this season, but this offense does look like it is flowing pretty smoothly. And you can't ask for more when you're running a motion offense. A nice flowing, you know, read and react, instinctive offense. That was the second personal foul on Kaya Harrison, as well as a couple of Demon Deacons and some early foul trouble in the first quarter. Really strong junior class for this Villanova team, Bella Runyon, part of that. And she is a perfect 4 of 4 from the free throw line. Yeah, I've covered them, you know, since they came in in their freshman year. And seeing the pups, or kittens, I should say, for the Wildcats, <laughs> seeing them grow into their own, and especially as we talked about in their new roles that they're having to get into this season. I mean, it's just tremendous growth all around in that junior class specifically. Well, the offensive rebound kept it alive, but then the block by Dalsey puts it back in the hands of the Wildcats. Caitlin Oriel, number four, on the floor now for Villanova. Runyon drives, hands it off to Dalsey in the paint, and she is fouled. I love that hesitation and drive by Runyon, but I believe she had it all the way to the basket. She didn't need to dump it off. First personal on Elise Williams puts the junior, Christina Dalsey, on the line for Villanova. And she seems like one of those players, Asia, who the offense is really a bonus with everything else she does. She rebounds so well, nearly 10 a game. She obviously is a shot blocking threat, had 86 blocks last year, which was a program record. Exactly. Great nose for the ball when you talk about on the glass and just protecting the rim. And she's that size for Nova. So that's why it's key that she stays in the game. Now Wake Forest trying to close the gap here. Wildcats on a 6-0 run, extending their lead to 11. Travel on Coles. And this was one of the concerns for Megan Jebbia about the team. We've got to take care of the basketball. So Villanova does such a good job of that. We need to do that as well. And she wants to build off Asia a really strong first season in Winston-Salem a year ago. Yes, yeah, she has. I mean, you talk about the scoring. Prolific scoring happening, especially with Spear in there. But, you know, she brought that motion offense, that culture into this Wake Forest program. And, you know, when you compare it to the other teams that she's had in the past, like American, the difference in this team, they're more athletic. So that's an added bonus. So once they get the IQ together and get into the flow, they can be very unstoppable offensively. Well, that has to be a frustrating defensive possession for Wake Forest because Dallasy just fought her way to the rebound. They had the trap, the Demon Deacons, but they couldn't keep her in. She got free and got two points. And I think the Deacons, they have to really improve on locking it on both ends. Offensive foul called against Scruggs. And the struggles continue offensively. We yeah, have another look at the foul here. Scrubs going downhill. Yeah, I believe she got into the bell though, but that was a great play by Aura Hill. She got right into the spot, got great position, and was able to take the charge. An opening at the free throw line for Olsen. 
Offensive rebound, swung back up and in. Ben McCurry, four points now off the bench. And a 21 to six lead for Villanova. It's a 10-0 run for the Wildcats. Stephen Deacon's in trouble early. And they'll have to get together now, Asia. And, and what do you think is the prime point of conversation in the other huddle for Wake Forest right now? Just not letting this game get any further away. Absolutely. Shot selection. They need to make shots. And they need to take the right shots. And then on the defensive end, they got to communicate. No personnel. And more importantly, don't foul. They said no to the free throw line quite a few times. And this is a team that can make free throws. Megan Jebbia calling the timeout, gathering her team together. A minute 14 to go in this first quarter. Villanova already 21 points off to a strong start offensively. They're shooting just under 43%. Wake Forest, meanwhile, just three for 11 from the floor. Goals. Drives, takes a little left, where she has been good when she's gotten an opportunity. Yeah, that's a great move. Classic step through right there, right at the logo. Six points, a perfect three for three for Malaya Coles to start this game. Six of Wake's eight points. And they get a turnover on the defensive end, trying to turn that into some points offensively now. And I like Scrub. She's out of position, you know, not comfortable fully offensively, but she gets it done defensively. You saw her step in for the help and get that feel. She is just, she's an energy player, isn't she? I mean, you watch her play, and I, I jokingly said to Megan Jebby, I feel like she's been there forever. Sometimes that COVID year <laughs> does make it feel like you've seen a player for a long time, but ever since her first year, 2019-20, she's just been that player that you sense a change in momentum when she has the ball in her hands. Exactly, and that's something that you can't teach at all. I mean, it just comes natural to have that motor, to be that spark, to be that energy plug for the team. Yeah. Yeah. Curry with the foul, two free throws, and now four points for Scruggs. Bella Runyon coming back on the floor. Senior out of Morristown, New Jersey. Final few seconds, shot clock off in our first quarter. Six points in the game for Olsen. She averages 24 and a half with the ball in her hands now from the elbow, pulls up and gets the roll. Know your personnel, you gotta know when Olsen has the ball in that scenario, she is looking to drive to the basket. Or excuse me, drive to the free line for that one. Olsen leading the way as Villanova out in front, 23 to 10, our score. I am vegan, I don't know what oh, banana okay. bread's like. A Thanksgiving thing, but it was delicious. So some potato goes. There goes my NIL. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Had a good start in the second quarter, by the way. Nice layup as Coles has yet to miss in this game. She's got eight points. And I don't know when sweet potato pie got so popular. I'm straight up pumpkin pie myself. But nobody else in my family likes it, so I didn't even get any this year. That ball did, I believe, hit the baseline. Our officials saying it was tapped out of bounds by... Wake Forest, I think, was the indication. Bill Covington, Hello. Justin Porterfield, Isaac Barnett are officials for this game today. I'm still on the cornbread. I don't <laughs> think it's a dessert, though. It's like a side. <laughs> well, I just like Ruby Whitehorn said, I just keep eating the food tellers. <laughs> Who needs dessert? <laughs> Great time of year. Three-pointer as the Shot clock buzzer went off. A better defensive possession for Wake Forest. And you can bet that was something that the Deeks talked about between quarters after Villanova shot 47% in the first quarter. Spot on, Jen. You know, just top the Wildcats. You got to have your head on a swivel, know your personnel, and you want to force them into tough shots, including those late second shot clocks. And for the Demon Deacons right now, no Kaya Harrison. No, Alyssa Andrews, both of those players with two fouls in the game. Oh, shot block with authority from Dallas. See, that's what she does. And I love the aggression 
by the Deeks going into the paint. But let's have another look here at the block. We know what Dulce can do. She's going to block this shot. And look at that foot movement. It starts with the footwork there and the timing and then the length. What a great block. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Elise Williams with the ball in her hands. She needs to take it herself. It is fouled. Elise still looking for her first points in this game. Averages 9.8 on the season. I love the attack downhill. D despite a block just happening, I love that Williams is still being aggressive. Attacking the basket. You don't knock down shots. You get into the paint. Lucy Olsen for Villanova having sort of been that second major option behind Maddie Seacrest last year for Villanova. You can put Elise Williams in that category with Jules Spear. Those two formed really such a nice duo the last couple of seasons. And Elise averaging over 10 points per game last season, was second on the team in scoring. And maybe just pressing a little bit, trying to find her way and understand her new role this season. Exactly. Coach loved last season how she had that balance of creating for others and then finding her shot when it was there. Now, like you were saying, Jen, a lot of pressing, a lot of forcing of shots. Wildcats driving. Wake Forest picking up the foul. It's the freshman Riley Turkoff. Turkoff and Diebel, the two on the floor off the bench for the Demon Deacons. Two open in the paint for Lucy Olsen. Can't give her that. They do such a great job executing on their baseline out of bounds. And like you said, can't give her that. Olsen in double figures. Tosses it up to Galaxy off the glass and in. I mean, you can't sleep on Olsen's defense. She has, despite her size, she has such length with her arms. She plays a great IQ. She does it well. And that's just a classic conversion. Great defense to offense. Olsen just doing it all. Great cut play. And then on the other end, gets the steal, pushes, and finds the rim runner. Dulce with her athleticism. Great finish. Malia Coles called for the offensive foul. That's what has resulted in Villanova back with the ball in their hands. Pull up shot from Burke off the rim, but Dalsey there for the rebound. And she is fouled by Scruggs. That'll be the second personal on Scruggs. You got it. You can't let Dalsey get the rebound. We know this is what she does. Yes. She has the height advantage. So what do you do defensively? You use her side, you block her out, get her as far away from the rim as possible. Free throw line has been important for Villanova in this game so far, and the Wildcats have taken advantage of getting there. Eight for nine, now nine for 10 in the game. Scruggs will come off with those two fouls. Reagan Conley, the six-foot junior from Chattanooga, Tennessee, coming on the floor for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, Scruggs really struggling, being out of position, being undersized. So when Hines comes back from that leg injury, it actually will really help him, especially going into ACC play, where the players in that full position have a lot of size. Bella Runyon picking up her second personal foul. 22 on the shot clock. Back to Conley. Now Williams looking inside. Coles. Good again. Coles with the, with the up and under. She's got a lot of secondary moves. A lot of great reads right there in the post. Back-to-back double-figure games for Malaya Coles. Had 12 in the last game. Already with 10. And a long way to go in this one. Five on the shot clock for Villanova. Olsen. Excellent. Looking to push that by the deep. And took off. Foul there, Asia. Good chance in transition for the Demon Deacons. 
Exactly. Great defense. That's where it all started. And then in transition, the attack, the aggressive attack to get to the free throw line. First point of the game for Turkoff. So average is just under five for the season so far. Out of Tenafly, New Jersey. Big time scorer in high school. 2,400 points. And again, it's all about knowing the role. Because, you know, we all go in the college world, that top, we're all those top players from our high schools that we came from. But it won't be the same when you get to this level. So knowing the role and just playing hard, that's key. Another beautiful basket within that motion offense. This time it's Caitlin Oriole from Villanova. Williams, off the screen, too strong. And look at Dallas bringing the ball to the floor. Until that last second. The adjacent. <laughs> Not a surprise though, right? Denny still and told us that in this offense, they're gonna have their big girl bring the ball up the floor at times. They believe that they can move her around and positionless offense. See how it plays out. So he's up and in from Devo. Very good, Devo. Very capable scorer. Very great shot selection. First three-pointer of the game for the Demon Deacons. And there's a foul away from the basketball. Just a great read here, coming off of the ball screen. Just enough space, she doesn't need that much. Just to elevate it, such a pretty shot. It says, you gotta believe this is a momentum booster for the Dukes. Yeah, you'd think so. She goes by Katie, so that's what she prefers. We'll go with that. Katie Evil. Could be an important three. Now I guess Williams did a good job defending Lucy Olsen and forcing the turnover. Yeah, I saw the elbow from Olsen go out there, but let's have another look at the defense. Look at Williams. She gets caught behind, but she gets right back to her spot gathered, and Olsen just a little too much with the elbow. Goals. There we go, it's clicking. The motion, the dribble drive, attack of the paint, it's clicking. Offense starting to click. Remember the Demon Deacons coming off a big time performance. 94 points in their last game on Monday. But a wide open lane to the basket for Dalsey on the other end. That can't happen. You get a, you start clicking on the offensive end. You got to get it done defensively as well. And for a team like the Wildcats, you can't get caught sleeping. Olsen and Dallas both with 10 points now for Villanova. 10 point game though. Demon Deacons with a chance to cut it to single digits with a basket here. Bulls just keeps that pivot foot alive and finds the basket. You know what I love about Bulls? She still finds her shot and she finesses her way to the basket. Nova's collapsing in, but the Deeks know they got to score in the paint. And she just finesses her way, gets through three defenders, and gets the bucket. And you feel like she could be poised to really have a big year if she can keep playing that consistently offensively in the paint. Missed all of last season due to injury. And looks like making up for lost time to start this season as the Deeks are pushing and they're fouled in transition. Dolce showing off her versatility. I love the drive. Wildcat still looking hot. This quarter, she's outscoring the rest of her team. Looks like she's going to get a little bit of a rest here, but the Demon Deacons have made their last three. They're five of seven since the second quarter started, Asia. Exactly. And look at that efficiency there. Seven or eight, seven, four, eight from the field all in the paint, making up 16 paint points for the Deeks, and that, those are the looks that they're looking for. And they get it done with her on the bench. Well, another point from the free throw line from Turkoff. 
Deeks, a perfect seven of seven from the line so far. And on cue, that is a jinx. I'll take that one. Their first miss from the free throw line. And the freshman Madison Jordan in the game. So let's see what she can do. A real spark plug, especially in the last game off the bench, coming off season high, 20 points. Such a great shooter. Quick couple of points on the other end for Villanova and Abby Jigede. Olsen. Tough defensive assignment for the freshman, but she did enough, and the Deeks get the turnover with the defense. Yeah, the freshman got to the spot, forced Olsen to have it dribbled back out. She didn't let her get to her money spot at the home run. What happened? It called the turnover. Great defensive effort right there. bit of a delay on the floor before we put the ball back in play. Just have to get the shot clock reset properly after that ball was kicked out of bounds. Look inside, somehow it does find the hands of Diebel. It'll go the other way. Yeah, the ball almost seemed to snuck its way in there. Have another look at it there. Great cut into the lane, face cut. Yeah, you can't get face cut. But unfortunately, you couldn't get the play to go. Brenda McCurry Curry back on the floor for the Wildcats. Her shot from the free throw line, too strong. And Wake Forest having to really go quite some time without Kaya Harrison on the floor, one of the important leaders for this Demon Deacon team, had two early fouls. Wide open look on the other end. That's happened a couple of times now, Asia, and McCurry makes them pay. Yeah, that's a great look, and they're gonna start on that defense. They collapsed in, didn't allow Wake Forest to get in the paint and then convert right on the other end. And Megan Jebby is saying their defensive transition has been an area they have to improve on. Made her team watch, let's just say, 10 minutes straight of it from the last few games. But Reagan Conley looking good on this drive. Yeah, I love that. That's a great finish. That's a tough, big body finish there. You saw the chest bump, and that is well deserved with the and one. McCurry picking up her second personal. Conley on the free throw line for the three point play. And Wake Forest now. Continuing to creep up on the Wildcats, who had 23 points in the first quarter, but have cooled off somewhat here in quarter number two. They're getting a lot more defensive stops, and that has to continue. Olsen gets past three, four defenders and makes it look easy. Yeah, it's just way too easy. You gotta force her into tough teams. Lead back to 10 for Villanova. They've led by as many as 15. Under 10 to shoot. Andrew's back on the floor. She's playing with two fouls. Diebel and the traffic loses it. Here come the Wildcats in transition. Spin move to the basket. Wow. And it's good from McCurry. That was pretty. She faked me out. I thought the kick out was coming. <laughs> <laughs> the freshman from Sparta, New Jersey, eight points in the game. And an extra added flair for Sal points on the last one. Final minute of our first half on the clock. Six on the shot clock for the Demon Deacons, and that play has been there all game long. Coles continues to go to work. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You gotta keep looking for Coles. Let her go to work. That's her prime real estate right there in the paint. 16 points in the game for Coles, the 6'3 redshirt sophomore. Four points off her career high. Yeah. 
half. This game really looked like it might get away from the Demon Deacons. They have worked through fours to find their way in. And that is an important foul that was just drawn by the Villanova defense because Coles is looking unstoppable there for a while. Exactly, and great read there. We talk about the IQ, the defense from the Wildcats. Look at that position. It starts with that great position right there. And like you said, Coles has gotten back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shots inside the paint. You know she's aggressive. So that's just a great read and great veteran play defensively by Brooke. You imagine this is Olsen's to shoot if she wants it. There is the shot. Still a couple of seconds left for the Demon Deacons. The heave will fall short. Still though, just a 10-point game at the half. A good comeback for Wake Forest in that second quarter. Absolutely. Wake Forest is coming back. They're going to talk some things. Starting off with the basketball. Jen Hildreth, Asia Ellison, happy to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon. Turnaround shot from Olsen. It was a contested one there. Is that offensive rebound for Dalsey? Follow-up won't go. It will stay, though, with the Wildcats. Yeah, you have to find... Dalcy on the glass. She is so relentless. She has such a great nose for it and such high elevation, such length. You got to put a body on her, box her out. Foul call. That gives me an opportunity to correct, by the way. Eric Bruton, Bruce Morris, Kayla Maxey are our officials. Had some different names up there initially, but that is our crew officiating this one today. Off the inbounds. Still in possession of the Wildcats. Olsen found a gap. The Beats got bailed out there with that missed shot, but you gotta get a body. Everyone, Villanova is team rebounding, so everyone is looking to crash. From the corner, shot off the rim for Andrews. Just inside the three point arc. And for two teams that shot close to 50% in the first half, both coming out a little cold to start the third quarter. Williams with the drive, and she is fouled on the floor before the shot attempt. See, that's what I love. You're not knocking down shots. You got to be aggressive in your attack. You get rewarded with a made basket, hopefully, or even a free throw line. And it looks like that is the third personal on Dallasy. So this could be a key moment in this game as she'll have to head to the bench. Yeah, Dalsey on the on the bench that takes away rim protection. If I'm the Deeks, I'm attacking the paint. No points off the inbounds play. So Villanova back with the ball in the hands of Lucy Olson. If you missed it earlier, the player who's been playing point guard, Janai Jones, out for this game. An ankle injury. But that offense, when it clicks, it looks like what you just saw. Exactly, Nova just getting the deke spread out. The help the helper has to be there. Ten in the game now for the freshman, Bryn McCurry, as the Demon Deacons still looking for their first points in the third quarter. Williams looking to get open off the inbounds play. Inside to Coles. There it is. You can't stop it. Couldn't stop it before. Now you have Dulce from Nova on the bench, the rim protector. Pound it in the paint. 18 points in the game for the Red Church sophomore. And the defense can't quite take it away. Villanova gets it back. Shot clock does not reset. Now it will. But the Demon Deacons with the rebound. Quite a scramble, but you got to love the effort by the Deeks. Scruggs. You already see. Yep, they're looking, looking to pound it in the paint. Scruggs there initially calling for it. Seven on the shot clock. This is a problem early. Wake Forest getting really deep in the shot clock and not able to get a good shot off now. The offensive rebound keeps the possession alive. Coles 
stop me if you can. She's fouled this time and will head to the free throw line. And I love the difference in the previous possession and this one now. They didn't force it into the paint off of that side entry. The best way to get it into the paint is the top of the key because the help side, they have to, they have to make that decision. Are they going to come in and help and open up the corners? Or are they going to stay out in the corners and then leave the paint wide open? Maddie Burke whistled for the foul her first. She heads off. Caitlin Oriel on the floor for Villanova, along with Bryn McCurry. Having a great game off the bench. Coles, meanwhile, a point away from tying her career high. She has 19. Make it 20. What a well-deserved rest. Wake Forest back within eight. Villanova has had a as much as a 15-point lead in this game. Now there is the shot clock go down. There's the cut and not the finish. Olsen didn't quite get the friendly roll. Bailed out with a miss there, but you know, for the for the, uh, for the uh, Wake Forest, they have to stay locked in. Can't sleep. Williams has yet to hit a field goal in this game. Move for five for the Demon Deacons. And there's another drive from Wilson. Maybe a little bit forced into traffic, but the offensive rebound pulled down and Bryn McCurry is fouled. And the, you know, Wildcats getting a little sped up here by the Wake Forest defense. That is a third personal on Scruggs, putting McCurry on the free throw line. Both coaches talk to us about players really understanding different types of roles. And for freshmen, it's always going to be a different role, right? They're coming into a different environment. But now you see Lucy Olson having a conversation with Denise Dillon over on the sideline. And she said, sometimes she can try to force things a little bit and let the game come to her. That's when she's been at her best. Already has a 40-point game on her resume this season. Williams knocks it down from three. Confidence booster for Williams there. I love to see her knocking down that, that outside shot. She is very capable. She hasn't been hitting him as much this season. And I love the fact that she's just been attacking the paint. But I love it even more that she's hitting it from the outside. Turnover. Demon Deacons out and running. Reagan Conley gives it up to Scruggs. Still out there with the three fouls. Scruggs, the best screener on the team. According to Megan Jebbia. Williams thought she'd go back to back. Scruggs with the offensive rebound. Scruggs right there. This is we talked about. The effort that she puts in. The things that she cannot teach. The energy plays. That's it right there. Second chance opportunity. Five points now. This is as close as it's been since the opening minutes of this game. Turnover against the Wildcats. Momentum all in favor of Wake Forest right now. Villanova's gone over three and a half minutes without a field goal. As Coles just needs a moment to get that knee brace taken care of. And why not have a smile on your face? The type of game she's been having so far. Leading the way, tied her career high, 20 points. Wake Forest within five. Coles from the elbow. Goes inside the scrubs gets her own rebound. Missed shot, but I love that look right there. I love the high range. No points to be had. Still almost four minutes now for Villanova. They're over the last four. 
Harrison. Looking to pull Wake Forest a little bit closer on this possession. Under 10 to shoot a lot of defensive eyes on number five, and you can understand why. Wake Forest coming alive, and it starts with Williams knocking down the three. I love to see it from the outside. And then another basket here. The deep coming alive. For this game, pretty hot. 23 points in the first quarter. They've cooled off while Asia Wake Forest starting to find their way a bit in this game. Exactly. You know, it starts with their defense, just clicking in, locking it on defense, stopping the personnel of Nova, but then on the offensive end, getting into the team. We talked about Cole. Scruggs got in there a little bit. Opens up some outside shots. We saw Williams hit a three. The offense really clicking for Wake Forest. And they click here and come a little bit closer. Five points of difference, seven on the shot clock as Conley is fouled on the drive. That'll reset the shot clock. Second personal foul on Maddie Weber and Conley at the free throw line. It is a 7-0 run for the Demon Deacons over the last two minutes. And it is now a one-possession game. What does Villanova need to do on this end, Asia, to try to find that rhythm they had earlier? You, you see right there, look how good of a job. <laughs> Wake Forest is with the steal there. Guarding Olsen. Let's see if they can convert. Trying to turn the turnover into points. Harrison is fouled as she goes to the basket. All defense right here. Defense to offense. And I love to see it. Look, it starts with this trap here in the corner. Weber gets in a little bit of trouble. And then here we go, right here in transition. Great attack there to get to the free throw line. And what did Megan Jebbia tell us about Kaya Harrison? Said she is such a leader, even more so this season. The grad student, not one who will really lead with her voice, but she leads with how hard she plays. Exactly, and also a great form of leadership. You see how hard she works. It just propels everybody to work as hard. And we talked about sort of being that energizer bunny, and she does that as well. You don't necessarily always have to be the vocal leader to lead your team. Now a 9-0 run, a one-point game. Villanova hanging on to the lead just barely. No points in the quarter yet for Lucy Olsen, who led the Wildcats with 12 in the first half. Foul against the Demon Deacons. And, and you gotta believe that Olsen being scoreless right now, that has a lot to do with Harrison being back in the game. Scruggs is going to have to come out. That is her fourth personal, so we'll see how Coach Jevia plays this as the game goes on because Scruggs has come up big a couple of times in this game. Wide open look for Olsen. What if that gets her going? The miss P1 defense from Wake Forest, that can't happen. You always have to have your head on the swivel. And you know that when, when Olsen is there, she's not inbounding the ball. She's, mo she's most likely to get it right there in the paint. Demon Deacons looking for the answer. Harrison dumps it off to Coles. Excellent pass. The Coles that Wake Forest is playing with right now, attacking the gaps, getting the drop, reading the defense. That's the motion offense that Coach Zebia wants to see from her squad. 22 points from Leia Coles. And once again, a one-point game. Eight on the shot clock. Oriole takes the shot and makes the three. Neither team has really been able to rely on the three-point shot too much in this game. Just the third made three for Villanova. Of course, two for eight from beyond the arc. Wake 
Wait, just drive into the basket. I love that. That drive and drop right there in the motion. And then Nova doing the opposite. Or Oriole getting, getting it from the three-point line. Conley back on the free throw line. And while the three-point shot maybe hasn't been as big of the story for either team, the free throw line certainly has. Both teams have been getting there and they have been taking advantage of their opportunities. A rare miss, just the second in the game for Wake Forest, or 15 of 17 from the line. Oriole just made one, make it two. Maybe the three-pointer is gonna be more of the story. Gave her a big boost of confidence there. But I love to see it. Be ready, step up, knock down shots. Wake Forest trying to stay within striking distance here. That'll help. First field goal of the game for Kaya Harrison. Olsen picked up a couple of fouls in this quarter. And so one basket, that wide open look off the inbounds. She has 14 in the game. Lots of ball movement. Will there be a good shot at the end of it all? Shot clock running down. Wake Forest says no. 1.2 seconds on the shot clock. Great defense there by Wake Forest. Now more important. They have to execute. In this 1.2 seconds that they have left, Nova's very good at executing in both baseline and sideline of that place. Olsen calling for it. We'll turn around and not get it to fall. Excellent job of rebounding there. Wake Forest was outnumbered in the paint, but it didn't matter. Alyssa Andrews came away with the ball anyway. And that is a turnover. Double dribble on Harrison. Tenth turnover in the game for the Demon Deacons. Under a minute to go in quarter number three. Wake Forest outscoring Villanova 18 to 12 in the quarter. Have come within a point a couple of times, but have been unable to retake the lead from the Wildcats. And then we picked fourth in the Big East preseason poll after finishing second in the league last season. Five on the shot clock now. They're trying to get it inside, and that just has not been there. Dowsey denied by the defense of Wake Forest. Absolutely great on ball screen defense, stopping Olsen coming off of that ball screen. And then when she made that pass, the deflection in that mid post. Great execution defensively by the course. And neither team's gonna get the ending they wanted to this third quarter, but it's a good one as we get set for the final 10 minutes. Here from the duel in Winston, same foul trouble is Scruggs for Wake Forest. She has four. We do have a couple players with three fouls, though. Most notably, Dowsey right there trying to defend Williams with three for Villanova. She does her job. But I love the attack for Williams. Attack Dowsey. Very foul trouble. And the three ball start to fall for Villanova. Oriole hit a couple. Now Maddie Weber joins the party. And Weber, the freshman, she's been doing so well thus far in the season for the Wildcats. Very fearless, knows her role, very steady player. Those were her first points of the game. Got the start in the game this afternoon with Zanai Jones unavailable due to injury. Five to shoot for Williams. Pulls up, has it blocked by one of the best in the Big East. Back over to Weber it goes. Wildcats trying to find the hot hand. Dowsey driving, has it tapped away. Yeah, brought it down low, so Wake Forest was able to get their hands in there. But again, you gotta keep her off the glass. Wake Forest has never led in this game. They came within one point in the third quarter. Couldn't quite get over the hump. Look inside, and Andrews 
is able to draw the foul. She was limited in the first half as well with a couple of early fouls. And I love that look by Wink. I love that all the guards, they look to get into the paint, especially when they have the size advantage. And you see her right there just posting up. Clearly had the size, the size advantage there and is rewarded getting to the free throw. Yeah, apologies. That is Reagan Conley who was able to draw the foul. She's gotten all of her points from the free throw line in this game so far. Four for five from the line is the junior. Make it five for six. Seventeen of nineteen now from the free throw line for Wake Forest. That's where they've been able to get their money. Continue to do it. Attack. Be aggressive in the paint. Wide open look for Maddie Burke. She knocks it down. Know your personnel. You see Burke on the perimeter there. You can't sink in. You can't overhelp. Lead back to eight for Wildcats. Williams, that's how you make your money. Everybody's out here sleeping. You gotta stay awake, you gotta stay alive. The credit, wait for us. That's a great read right there. Megan Jevia saying that her message to Elise Williams has been, we're gonna get you the shots you need. Don't force it. That's a prime example. Need a shot. Olsen knows it. Deep three. Won't get the roll, but gosh, it came close. Woo. Harrison quickly the other way. Dukes get the rebound. I will say for the Dukes defensively, a lot of those shots have been late shot clocks. You got to credit that defense and then credit the offense to Williams. Look at that, after the wide open look, she drives with confidence, goes against Dalsey, who she knows has three fouls and has to be careful. And this is the last thing Villanova wants to see. Maddie Weber down on the ground. They're already down a couple of players with injury at the moment. Mentions Zanai Jones. Also, 6-1 sophomore Megan Olbreeze is out with injury. Weber back to her feet, but painfully so. Ooh, the ankle. Right foot looked like. Yep, got tied up. <coughs> Weber and Dalsey right here got tied up. Their feet got tied together. So a tender foot for Maddie Weber as she makes her way off. Got her first start of her career today. 5'11", freshman out of Bridgeville, Pennsylvania. She'll have to go to the bench. And you talked about both coaches empowering their benches. Well, that bench is going to need to continue to step up big for the Wildcats as Weber is out. And Bryn McCurry, who's been fantastic, another freshman, comes back in. Runyon now running the point for Villanova. Olsen not been able to find herself many good looks in the second half. And defended pretty well by the Demon Deacons. Tough shot and it will not go. Wake Forest back in possession. Doing a great job, outstanding job of defending Olsen. So for Nova, someone's got to step up and score when Olsen's being covered. Touch after she bodies her way into position. She's had some issues, Scruggs, with just getting those layups to fall, had the positioning. Now she has to defend with four fouls against Dallas. Had to let her go. Exactly, right on point. 
when you're in foul trouble, it affects your defense. You play a little timid. And that's a great look right there. Great read. Get in the Dalsy and let her go to work. And the Deacons Just have an outstanding game, really stepping up. 11 points for the junior. Harrison drawing a foul on the Wake Forest defense. Kyrie Harrison pleading her case. That is her third personal. Said it would be interesting to see how Megan Jebbia would play with Scrug. She does take her off here in the window for that. We need a timeout coming up, which we get under five minutes. Olsen. No. Great defense there. Williams just that sting. Getting her hands in there. Really disrupted Nova's perimeter offense and caused a turnover. Conley. She's feeling. Wake Forest. Salem, a tie game. Under five minutes to play. You can see each team with three timeouts left. A couple of fouls to give for Wake Forest. Three for Villanova. Lucy Olsen going to the free throw line as Kaya Harrison just picked up her fourth personal foul before that last whistle. And as we look at this game, such a good test for both of these teams who talked about trying to find their identities, get comfortable for a lot of their players in new roles. What's gonna be important, Asia, for both teams down the stretch? What started as the moneymaker on both teams, and that's getting it into the paint. Yes, they made some threes not too long ago. They've been knocking it down, but those are opened up because they're getting the ball to the paint. You look at the free throw line, both teams shooting efficiently from the charity stripe, so I'm looking to attack the paint. Good battle going on in the paint right now with Coles and Dalsey trying to defend her this pass. Knocked out of bounds by Villanova. 12 seconds on the shot clock for Wake Forest to work with. Williams goes in and Coles a little bit off balance. Got her own rebound. Still no bucket. And keep it out Harrison with two fouls. Actually now they're switched out. Smart move there, got, or sorry, four fouls. The smart move right there. Now Williams is gonna guard Olsen. Tough pass, one of the top scorers in the country. Olsen coming in, averaging 24 and a half points per game. That ranks number six in division one. Turnover Wildcats, back to Wake Forest with a chance to tie or take the lead for the first time. Maybe a little offense defense switch as Harrison comes back and makes her presence felt. Great attack going down here. The obvious athletic speed advantage over Ariel. And Harrison takes complete advantage of that. Great take to the basket. Nine to shoot. Harrison on the basket, Dalsey well covered. Deeks with the ball in their hands, but the foot on the line for Conley. But you gotta love the effort defensively. So disruptive, Wake Forest has been. And it looks like shot clock is not gonna reset. They won't say that possession was ever fully earned by Wake Forest. 2.7 on the shot clock. Off the fingertips of Williams, so now under the basket with one second to shoot for Villanova. Quick shot is needed. Finish not there. Can the Demon Deacons take their first lead? Yes. Williams driving. 
Off the front of the rim. Olsen now pushing the pace, gets it over to Burke, around and out, Dowsey. It's been big on the glass. Oreo has hit a couple of big threes already, not this time. You can almost feel things tightening up for the players as we head down into the final few minutes of this one with the game on the line. Yeah, and I think it's way through now, both teams just need to slow it down, calm it down a little bit. Now, one thing for Wake Forest, just one turnover this half. They had nine in the first half, Asia. That's certainly helped them get to the point where they are, tied at 63. 30-second timeout. Coach Jebby wanted to talk things over with her team. Look at that. You see Denise Dillon just looking her players in the eyes. Trying to help them figure out how to finish this one out. They're going to look to attack downhill, get the ball into the paint. Just saw Malaya Coles. I feel like it's about time for another Coles basket. She's having a career game, 22 points, leading the Demon Deacons. That's where the ball goes, and the defense knows it. Three Wildcats around Coles. They get the seal. And I love that jump and that trap out on the wing there. And Oriel, who's hit a couple of threes, takes the drive this time. Swings Villanova back in front. Williams. the shot clock. Williams got it out of trouble. Conley gets it inside to Harrison. Yes, exactly. That's how you beat the trap. You gotta stay full. You have two players at you. That means one's open. You stay full. Survey the floor. Wide open right there in the basket. Great lead by the Defense! 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 A lot of similarities between both these teams, what they try to do. Timeout called by Villanova. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Such a tight game, but how about Oriole here? Step it up for the Wildcats. And then on the other end, Wake Forest. I love this look, this read out of the trap down here in the paint. Wake Forest keeps making good reads like that offensively. They can carry out the win. So as Megan Jebbia talks to her team and their defense and probably also what to think about next time down the floor offensively. How about for Villanova? What are they looking for here with seven seconds on the shot clock? I'm looking for Olsen. And then if I'm Wake Forest, I'm playing discipline D. I'm knowing personnel. No one who I'm helping off of because all Villanova players are capable of knocking down outside shots, capable of scoring. But focus in on that initial with Olsen. Olsen inbounding the ball. She gets it right back and drains the three. Got to find her. And those short shot clock sideline out of bounds play. Most likely, if it's not a lob, the player out of bounds is receiving the ball back, and especially when it's a prolific scorer like Olsen. Now a three-point deficit for the Deeks with under a minute to play. Williams looking her way in. Which way are we pointing? Villanova. Great execution here. Looking for Olsen there. Knocking down the three. This is what Olsen does. She's so clutch. She creates for others, but she also creates for herself. And knocks it down when it's needed. Such confidence. And for a Wake Forest team that had done such a good job taking care of the basketball in the second half, a turnover at a crucial time. Now they are allowed to look at this at the end of the game to see who the ball went out of, off of, excuse me. Well, you can see the officials, or maybe it was even some 
uncertainty with one pointing one way, one pointing the other. The call on the floor was Villanova basketball, but Eric Burton's gonna go take a look at the video. Let's take a look ourselves. Does it touch Elise Williams? You almost have to look at the trajectory of the ball. I mean, from this angle, it looked like it was headed towards the baseline, but then went towards the sideline. So I'm thinking Williams might have touched the glass. Eric Bruton's going to let the scorer's table know. Will it stay with Villanova or Wake Forest? It's going to stay with the original call, which is Villanova basketball. And they will call the timeout. Have opportunity to advance the ball. Three-point game. And now with a full 30 on the shot clock, how do things look? for Villanova and with Wake Forest Asia, just two team fouls. If we're thinking about going to the free throw line, how does Wake Forest play this defensively? Well, you gotta stop Olsen. You gotta look for, it's worth the last play. I wouldn't foul just yet, I'm gonna defend. Look for Olsen, try to execute defensively. game, 47.9 seconds on the clock at Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem. What an incredible non-conference test for both of these teams. There's Olsen with the ball. Of course, is going to try to play this possession without fouling as you suggested. At least so far. Williams tasked with guarding Olsen. Great defense there. Olsen looking to hold it there. Eventually, Williams does commit the foul. Why foul there, though, Asia? She's played such good defense to that point. When they're running down time, they want to stop the play. They want to take, they want to stop the clock. You don't want nobody to keep running the clock down. So you have a foul to give. There's another foul, that's four now on Williams. As she picks up two back to back, and the next foul by the Demon Deacons will put Villanova on the free throw line. You can hear Eric Bruton just communicating with the scorer's table, trying to make sure the game clock and shot clock are correct. Williams is gonna come out for the moment. Defense, offense, substitution there for Williams. Olsen gets it on the inbound. She is immediately fouled. If that was Harrison, that's going to be her fifth. And it is on Diebel. So Diebel called for the foul for Wake Forest. And that'll put Olsen on the free throw line. Wildcats best free throw shooter on the season in terms of getting there and making the most. She's 17 to 24 coming into today. Knocks that one down. She's four or five in the game. And the hill getting a bit steeper now for Wake Forest as the lead back to five for Villanova. Remember in the final minute, you do have the option to advance the basketball. So Wake Forest calling the timeout should have that opportunity. Free throw so clutch. And both teams have been shooting well this entire game, but you see down the stretch how valuable those free throws are. And those are just the name of the So for Wake Forest, Asia, what are they looking for? Under 30 seconds, they're down five. What's important in terms of how they need to execute offensively? They're going to they're gonna have to get the best shot possible. They haven't made a lot of threes, but if a three goes in, I would take it. But at the end of the day, they need to find the best shot possible. They're running out of time. So they're going to look for a quick shot. Well, their best option from three has been Reagan Conley. Hit back-to-back -back threes to tie this game in the fourth quarter. No points in this quarter from Malaya Coles. 
and trouble getting the ball and a five second violation as the Villanova defense steals the show. Excellent execution, that's that IQ. Down the stretch, stay poised, lock in defensively. Villanova now playing with confidence, a five point lead. They'll go back to the free throw line and you can boil this one down to a couple of crucial mistakes by Wake Forest. The turnover by Elise Williams a few moments ago and then this inability to get the ball in bounds, just seeing their opportunity slip away. Caitlin Oriel, one of four players in double digits for Villanova. It has not been a one-woman show. It was so often the Maddie Segrist show last year, but Lucy Olson, a second-team all Big East selection last year, preseason Big East selection this year. She's been leading the way, but she's had some help. Now Wake Forest needs some help. Down seven, needs some points and fast. Yeah, but they need a three. No doubt about that now, right? Whereas maybe there was an option before. Now they need to pick up some points quickly. And they go inside. No foul called. And 7-0 run by Villanova. It looks like Wildcats are putting this one to bed. So much to take out of this, I would think, for both teams. And you know, these are the moments that you learn from. It is the non-conference. It's still early in the season for both of these teams. And you can imagine there's a lot that both coaches will have video-wise to be able to show their teams to help them going forward. Absolutely. And we honed on from the start of this game, knowing your roles, trying to find your fit in this new system, you know, with the departure of two star players from the past season. And we're seeing some of that now. We're seeing bits and pieces, but it needs to be consistent. Both coaches have said that. Pull-up shot, won't go for Harrison. And now Villanova can just see the final seconds tick away as the Wildcats improve to 4-1 on the season, pick up the win 74-65 on the road.